get you to the courtroom. Michelle Rogers just took the stand. She's talking about Friday, March 17, 2017. She was out drinking St. Patrick's Day with the defendant. Let's listen in. Have you been drinking? Not in between that time, no. And what time do you think it is roughly when you see Mr. Terry? Um, it was dark by that point. Uh, I would say 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Okay, so it's been a couple hours at least. Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. Um, when he comes, I guess you see him back at the house, correct? Correct. Describe how he comes home and what happens when he comes home. Tell me what he's like at that point. So um, he didn't come to the front door. He came to the back door, which was right off of the kitchen, um, the sliding door. And he, he knocked at that door, and I proceeded to let him in. Um, at that time, he was very clearly drunk. Um, he couldn't walk straight. Um, he seemed just very, um, you know, it's hard to describe, but just you could kind of sense his energy as being very frustrated or angry or upset. Um, just in general, just the right. general sense. So as the kids say, you got a vibe off of him that he seemed angry? Correct. Did you do anything in that moment? I did not. I went and I sat back down on the couch where I was when he showed up. And what does he do? Uh, so he went into the kitchen and I believe he was making a sandwich. He was making some kind of food at the counter and um, the kitchen and the living room area is pretty open. So as I was sitting on the couch, I could, I could see him. Um, and just to help the jury picture that, if you're sitting in your living room, can you see into your kitchen? Yes, it's it's an open layout. It's like an open concept kind of thing? Yeah, we're just the counter dividing the living room and the kitchen. Right, so you can see him in the kitchen and he can see you in the living room and tell us what happens next. Um, so I remember sitting on the couch watching TV and then you know, the next thing I remember is standing behind the couch and I'm, I'm looking at him in the kitchen and I remember him coming around the counter and coming at me. Right. And before that, before we get to the part where he comes at you, do you remember if you guys are having any sort of argument, if anything's being said, either he's saying something, you're saying something, whatever the case may be? I don't recall any of that, no. So you remember now all of a sudden there's a moment he's coming at you, and I want you to describe that as best as you can. Do you mean he's just leisurely walking in your direction? No, he was um, coming at me very quickly and aggressively to the point where I kind of backed off and, and braced myself and I actually verbally said, you know, what are you doing? You know, oh my God, what are you doing? And when you said the words to him, what are you doing? What, if anything, did he do? Um, he proceeded to knock me into the, the front door that was behind me. Um, and at that point, then we both fell to the floor. All right, do you mean he makes physical contact with you somehow? Correct. How does he physically contact Just with you? his body, like just taking his whole body and pushing it into me. And at that point, do you say anything to him? Um, I don't think I said anything at that point, no. All right, so what happens next? Um, so then we're on the floor and he's just trying to keep me on the floor and he keeps punching me um, wherever he can find access to punch me. So whether it be the face, the chest, the back, wherever. Um, and he, is a was a wrestler and the best way I can describe what he was doing is trying to keep me in wrestling moves and keep me on the floor so that I couldn't escape. When you say he's a wrestler, you mean like in the WWE or you mean like a high school coach? A high school coach um, or a coach. Maybe it was not high school, but he was a wrestling coach. Um, and I can't remember if he wrestled himself, but. Um. So you guys are now on the floor near the front door and there's a, a fight happening on the floor. At any point, do you say something to him to try and defuse the situation? Um, yes, so as, as the struggle continues and I'm trying to break free, there was a point um, when I yelled at him, I said, you know, I love you, why are you doing this? And he, he said... So tell us what happens next in the, in the fight. Um, he just continues to... <laughs> he continues to punch me in the face. Um, at one point, he gets me onto the floor and... Are you still in the same place by the door or has the fight moved? No, it's mo it moved through the living room and then um, where I landed on the floor was, you know, I landed face first um, with my upper body like on the kitchen tile and then my lower half was on the <coughs> carpet of the living room. Um, and at that point, there was, there was blood everywhere. Um, where is the blood coming from? I, I believe my nose at that time, he had broken my nose. Um, 
But I remember trying to push myself up and he was on me. And every time I tried to push myself up, I couldn't grip on the floor because there was so much blood. And um, he would purposely put his weight on me and push me back down. So I, I was unable to get up. And through all of this, are you fighting, resisting, trying to stop him? Yes. So what comes next? Um, so I remember laying there and I was laying on my left side and I remember seeing the, the trash can there. There was a black trash can. And at this point he was taking both of his hands and he was taking my head and he was slamming it into the floor. And um, so every time he would do that, my vision would go black. And I thought he was gonna knock me out or I would be unconscious or something at some point. At some point, does there ever come a moment in the fight where there's sort of a break in the action? Yeah, so, so after that, there was a time that he got up off of me for a short time and I was able to sort of sit up on the floor and I, I remember just kind of having my head down and just And then the next thing you know, um, Mr. Terry comes around behind me and stabs me in the neck. When you say he stabs you in the neck, do you know what he stabs you with in the neck? I didn't see it, but it was a knife. All right, and when you heard the shuffling in the kitchen, do you keep knives in the kitchen? Yes. So looking back now, when you hear the shuffling noise in the kitchen, <coughs> is it the sound of someone rummaging in the kitchen yes. looking for something potentially? Sorry, yes. All right, so now you are still seated on the floor, and I want you to describe your position and his position at the moment when you feel something plunged into your neck. So again, I'm, I'm sitting on the floor, and I'm kind of just, again, disoriented, just kind of sitting, you know, with my hand and my, my head in my hand. And then he comes around behind me, and he wraps his arm around my neck, and he stabs me in the throat with a knife. So he's stabbing you from the back? Yes. Wrapping around you, describe Yes. At that moment, are you armed? No. Are you even standing up to put up a fight? No. So now he stabs you in the neck with something, which you assume is a knife. What happened? <laughs> so at that point, uh, again, it was just... He continued to, you know, try and stop me and try and punch me. I was able to get loose for enough time to be able to turn around and directly behind me there was the garage door. Um, so I was able to get the garage door open and run to the garage. All right, now you're in Lansing, so I'm guessing homes might be laid out a little different, but is there access from inside your home to the garage? Yes, there's a garage door that goes into the garage. All right, well, we have those here in Florida too, so that's not so different. Uh, but at this time of the year in March, is it snowing in Michigan? There was um, a light blanket of snow on the ground at this time, yes. All right, so you now make for the door to the garage, and as you step into the garage through the door, is there a garage opener? Yes, so I pushed the opener with my left hand as I, as I was running out um, to try and get the garage door to open so I could escape that way. And did the garage door start to open? It did, um, and I ran towards it, but it was very slow, um, so I couldn't quite get under it right away before he was able to get to me again. All right, so now you're waiting for the garage door open enough and he attacks you again? Yes. Describe how he's attacking you again. Um, he, he was just trying to stop me from leaving and um, we both fell to the ground at that point and somehow had rolled out of you know the garage that was open um, down the driveway. So now you've spilled out onto the driveway like out in public? Correct. And what's happening there? Um, so we were rolling down the driveway a bit and I ended up in a position where I was, I was under him and he was on top of me. Um, he, had, he had used both of his hands to take my head and slam it into the cement multiple times. Um, sorry. Um, so he had, he had the knife and he had stabbed me three times in the right shoulder. All right, so he's still armed with this knife even though you fled out of the home and he's chased you. Yes, and this, this entire time I'm, I'm screaming for someone to come help me. At um, any point do you realize that some sort of like neighbor or person nearby has responded to your calls for help? Yeah, as I was screaming, um, I could very faintly hear voices across the street um, saying, you know, get off of her and 
and just hear them talking. Um, a lot of it, I couldn't make out what they said. All right, and so we're at a point where Mr. Terry and you are in the driveway, you're still fighting, he's still armed with a knife. Tell me what else he's doing and what you're doing in response. So again, I'm, I'm screaming this entire time, you know, that he's gonna kill me and somebody please help me. Um, but he had, he had stabbed me those three times in the shoulder and he went to bring the knife down again and I had reached up and I, I grabbed with my right hand the, the blade under the knife um, in midair. And don't ask me how I did it. Um, <laughs> I just grabbed um, and I took the knife and I, I pulled it. Again, I'm on my back and I, I pulled it across my face and I just remember thinking he was gonna like stab my eye out or something as I'm doing this. But I was able to pull the, I'm sorry, pull the knife enough over that it fell out of his hand and it fell to my left side. Um, and then I kind of rolled over it and tucked it underneath me so that he didn't have access to it anymore. And so once you kind of tucked the knife under your body, rolled onto it, does he stop fighting with you or does he st still no. keep trying to get the knife? No, he was still slamming my head to the floor. Um, and because, and he would, he would reach down with his hand and he would try and like fish for the knife real quick. Um, but then I would try to get up and then he would hold me back down again. And then, you know, kind of just back and forth, like trying to fish for the knife and I'd get up and he'd try to fish for the knife. And then he pushed me back down. And there was a point um, when he had gotten really pissed off because I was, I was kind of, you know, holding the knife with my arm as it's tucked under me. And he reached down and he bit me um, on the forearm here to try and get the knife loose um, from my grasp. Is that the only place he bit you? No. Um, shortly after that, after he fished a couple more times for the knife and couldn't get it, he reached down and um, he bit me twice on the side of the, my left cheek to try and get me to let go. And throughout all of this, are you screaming and yelling for help, asking him to stop, putting up resistance? Yes. So does this eventually, does the fight sort of end at some point? Um, yeah, so we didn't live that far from the hospital and stuff. And, and as the neighbors were, you know, I later found out they were on the phone with 911 at the time. We could hear sirens coming. You, you could hear them coming from around the corner, not too far away. And when we both heard the sirens, that's when he got up off of me and ran back in the house. And what did you do? Um, I got up and I grabbed the knife so he couldn't get it back again. And I couldn't see very clearly because my contacts were in, but they were all like covered in blood. Um, but I, I ran across the street to the voices of the neighbors who were telling me to come over there, you know, come here. Um, and then I, I proceeded to go across the street and I collapsed on my back in their front yard. And where was the knife when you went across the street? Uh, I'm not sure where it landed, but I remember when I fell down, I threw it so that if he came back, he wouldn't find it. So you carried it with you away from the driveway to wherever it is you ended up in the yard of the neighbors? Correct. At some point, did law enforcement come and respond and emergency medical people respond and end up taking you to the hospital? They did. Your Honor, if I can approach the witness. I want to show you, ma'am, what's been marked as states, states 67 A through H. Yes. You have a chance to look at these earlier? I did. Do these photos fairly and accurately depict the injuries that you suffered in the fight with Mr. Terry? Yes, they do. Your Honor, at this time, I'd move into evidence states exhibit 67A through H. Other than previously discussed, any objections at this time? Not other than previously discussed. <clears throat> All right, they'll be admitted. Permission to publish, Your Honor? You may publish. Ma'am, I'm going to show you 67A. Is this you in the hospital? Yes, it is. Um, you are not wearing makeup, right? <laughs> no. Okay, so the, the discoloration around your eyes, is that bruising? <laughs> yes. I want to draw your attention over here to what is your left shoulder, but in your picture, it's on the right side. Is this an injury you suffered from one of the knives that stabbed into you? Yes. I'm going to show you state 67B. I want to draw your attention right here to the almost dead center of your neck. What is that? A stab wound. Is that the stab wound that you talked about when he came behind you and stabbed you in the neck? Yes. Obviously here, this has been stitched up, but at some point that was an open gaping wound, I assume? Yes. Here's State's Exhibit 67C. What are we looking at here? Um, that's my right eyebrow where I was stabbed. <coughs> Here's State's 67D. What are we looking at here? Uh, my right cheek and another stab wound. Mm 
And here states 67E. What are we looking at here? Another stab wound on my right cheek. Here states 67F. What are we looking at there? My left cheek, and those are the two bite marks that he left on me. Here states 67G. What are we looking at here? It's another stab wound. And then finally, here stage 67H. What are we looking at here? Those are the three stab wounds to my right shoulder that I mentioned. Ma'am, all of these photos that we see are, are generally, I, I would describe them as sort of like your shoulders and up, kind of your collarbone area and up. Is that correct? Yes. All of the attacks that you suffered from the knife or um, I guess the bite wound too, but really the knife is what I'm interested in. Those are all to your shoulders, neck, and face. Is that correct? Correct. Pass the witness, Ron. Cross examination. Good morning, Ms. Rogers. Good morning. There are parts of this night that you don't remember, correct? Only the reason why he came at me. Right. You don't remember what actually started this incident, correct? Correct. But you have memory of everything else that you claim occurred, but not what actually caused and started this to occur, correct? Correct. correct. You know your blood alcohol level was .124, more than one and a half times the legal limit that night? I don't know the exact number, but I was drinking, so. You weren't just drinking, you were intoxicated, right? I don't know what number considers, you know, what number makes it me intoxicated versus drinking, but well, if I was drinking. If .08 is intoxicated legally and you're at one and a half times that, you'd agree that's intoxicated, right? Yes, if that's the, if that's the level. Okay. And it wasn't just beer, you were drinking shots too. We had, yeah, one shot. Okay, and you claimed you left the bar upset, but you weren't upset, you were ticked off, right? No, I was upset. Didn't you previously say you were ticked off? I mean, upset and ticked off are pretty similar. Okay, so now you admit you were ticked off, is that right? I was angry, upset, frustrated, okay. um, pick a synonym. Well, upset and ticked off are very different, wouldn't you agree? No. Okay, so to you, upset can mean ticked off. You were also pissed off, right? Yes, all of those are synonyms to me. Okay, so you admit that you left because you were angry, not just upset, correct? No, I left because it was time to pick up our child. Well, speaking of that, you actually stumbled and almost fell down at Matt's parents when you picked up your child, right? No, that's not correct. Didn't you previously say that you did? No, I never said that I did. Judge, may I approach the witness? July 14th, 2017, page 92. Ma'am, I'm showing you your statement. Please feel free to read as much of the page as you need, but the part is highlighted. So no, you gotta read that to yourself oh, and wait for the next question. I'm sorry. Did you read, have time to read it? Yes. Okay, may I have that? Did you previously say, yeah, when asked, do you recall stumbling or almost falling down at their house? Did you say that, ma'am? Yes, but that's not the latest testimony. That's right, because you've given multiple versions of what happened. Isn't that true? No, there was a correction to that statement in the, in the transcript after that one. That is not the latest one. Ma'am, there's no correction. This is taken under oath. Isn't that correct? There was a correction to that after the, he the hearing after that. There was a correction to correct that. So you do, you do not have the latest one. Ma'am, is this a transcript of the July 14, 2017 hearing at the testimony regarding child custody? Yes, it is. But there so was that's shortly after the incident occurred, correct? Correct, but and there was- shortly after the incident George, occurred- Judge, you allow the witness to answer the question? No, she, and shortly after the incident occurred, you were specifically asked, do you recall stumbling or almost falling down at their house? Is that correct? Yes or no? Per that, but it's not the latest testimony. Ma'am. There was a correction to that statement because they didn't put it How down How many correct. times have you given various versions of what occurred? I've testified many times and there's not been various versions. 
Well, there have been, actually, because sometimes you said you didn't have shots, and other times you said you did. Isn't no. that true? No, we've had shots. Okay, now you say that. But do you recall previously, and now you're smiling, do you no, recall I'm not. previously indicating that you had only had beer? We had beer, and we did have a round of shots. Okay, yes. now you admit that you had shots, too, right? I admitted that the last time we spoke, too. Ma'am, that's because you talked over and over and over about this incident. Isn't that true? I've had to. Okay. Now, in addition to saying that um, now you're saying you weren't stumbling, but right after you said that you were, you actually then drove home with your son in the car after having been out drinking all week. Objection, I'm sorry, all day, correct? You can approach. 